super excited to share with you this Enphase charger. And the reason is because it has the NAX, the Tesla NACS connector. Hey guys, Trust Ted, Tesla owner, Silicon Valley. Today I got another review for you. Now I know what you might be thinking. Hey Ted, we already know about Enphase and how they make solar panels and chargers or whatever, and we already saw your review. Well, this one is something you haven't seen. Super excited to share with you this Enphase charger. And the reason is because it has the NAX, the Tesla NACS connector. So as always, we'll be going through the product, the functionality, the installation, the price value, and then at the end, I'll give it our final rating. Let's get on with the review. All right, guys, I'm gonna do an unboxing video, but I, I need to fall on my sword. I already did one, but it was a really bad recording um, because I moved the box and you couldn't even see half of what was happening. But anyway, let's get into it and show you what it's basically gonna look like when you get it. Um, on top, there's the documentation, so that's great. I'm just gonna put that aside. The uh, charger is housed in here, it's protected. There is a holster here where you're gonna put the NACS cable in there. I'll put that to the side, get rid of this here. And the charger is in this container. Um, it's again, safely packaged. It's got some weight to it. Uh, I'm gonna be you know, really frank, it's definitely not super light, but this is what you want. You want something that's well built. So the um, Enphase charger, if you guys don't know, or haven't heard of Enphase, they make solar panels. They bought Clipper Creek. That was the charger company previously that made awesome chargers too. Um, Enphase, what's awesome about this system is that my solar panels are also using Enphase inverters, micro inverters. And so this is gonna allow me to charge um, from the sun only if I want to, that's an option. So it does connect to Wi-Fi, which we'll show you. And then the last thing, um, a long 25 foot cable length, which is great. And most important for those of you who have a vehicle with the Tesla or NACS, um, really, actually a really nice, great handle, um, nice look and feel. So um, that's the unboxing. I thought I would also show you guys the documentation that comes with the kit. Now, you can actually look in the link below the previous video I did where I installed the Enphase charger, um, which had the J1772. I'm actually gonna take that charger out when I install this NACS one. But um, you know, the, these are the bolts that hold the charger in and these are spacers depending upon you know, how you, you're gonna mount the uh, charger. And um, so like everything you need inside, really great. Um, again, you can, this is the app where I'll show you how I use it. Um, so kind of nice getting started. And then it's always appreciated when you have a manual. Okay, I just wanna, I just wanna show you where the charger is gonna go. I'm gonna mount it onto this panel here. And then you can see the electrical box here where I have the hot, the two hots and the ground. There's no neutral for this charger. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is mount the charger. What's really great is they give you these beefy um, nuts and there's some standoffs here that you can put in that allow you to go at an angle. So let's, um, let's get that started. Have my wrench ready. Probably should have done that earlier, but that's okay. And then I have a pre-done hole already, so I'm just gonna go for that, get it started. So I just want to get it started and then same thing, put the other one in. Just some feedback for end phase when I'm putting in the bottom bolt, uh, if the future designs, if you can leave a little more room between these two conductors, that would allow the drill to get a little easier to go up. You don't have a lot of room here and every time, every time I try to screw it up, it's constantly hitting the button to like stop it from going forward. So, I mean, again, there's only so much room, I get it. But, um, you know, just giving them some product feedback here. Be great if they could uh, have a little bit more room. So I think the other option is to just get a socket extension, uh, which obviously 
is good to do if you have one. Even without one, I was able to tighten it. All right, let's keep going. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is install the holder. So it's funny, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, it must go like this. And I was like, what? It's a tight fit. No, actually, you have to mount it like this. So um, this, is, this is how you have to mount it. And they're, they give you some screws, but um, this is a bit tricky. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> this is a really great design. Th this is pretty far in. Look, look how far you have to you know, have a screw gun. Now, luckily I have a bit that'll probably go that long, but if you don't, you're gonna need one. Okay, again, this is the kind of bit you're gonna need to be able to get the screw and to tighten in there. So if you don't have something like that, you're gonna need it. Um, Enphase does provide the screw, which is nice. So um, I'm gonna mount it in this corner, as I mentioned. Okay, so I finally got the screws into here. Uh, note uh, for those folks who maybe don't know, this is a, actually a magnetic tool. Um, and I actually, you put that through here and it helps magnetize this. The screw stayed and then I was able to put it in. Um, and to just take a look at what the holder looks like. So that's kind of nice, just like that. The only thing left is now hooking up the electrical here. So I'll strip these, tie it in, and then I'm actually gonna open the app and then we'll show you how it interfaces with the Enphase Solar as well. All right, so you can see I stripped the wires and the first thing you need to do before I get the attachments going is there's a threaded nut here. So you need to fit the plate that um, covers this. So put those through like that. And then uh, you put the nut over these. I'm gonna thread these in and then, yeah, just like that. And then I will hook up the connections. So again, red to red, black to black, green is ground. And I'll use wire nuts. And then I'll also, I highly suggest you guys put black tape around it as well to just really hold it in place. Show you that next. You know, what you wanna to try to do is you definitely wanna try to twist these, you know, get it started. Obviously, the nut is gonna do a lot of the work, but you can see there's braids on this, and uh, you want that those braids to like mate with these other braids, if you will. So, um, you know, this wire is a little thicker. Obviously, I think it's eight gauge, it might even be six. Um, so again, I don't know how well you can see. I basically just tried to get them to twist together a little bit. This That's a job of this nut as well. But um, you, know, you can tell as you screw in these in, it gets harder, it gets, it'll, there'll be some grab to them. And then what will happen is that, you know, when you see them sort of twist together, and I also pull on them, I'll show you that too. So yeah, it's getting really hard now. So these, this is a, a good connection. I can barely turn it. Ugh. Sorry. Okay, and then, you know, I always like give it a yank. Um, that's really good. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is put tape on this. So this is something that actually my dad taught me years ago. And uh, every time I wire an outlet or any electrical thing, I always use tape and uh, black tape. And also I always buy 3M, something made in America, like something that really works, holds together. So, um, that's my strong suggestion for you because a lot of black tape is not even made for electrical where this is like specifically for electrical, it has better thermal um, holding capabilities and such. So I like to go like this and put the tape around it and there you go. So now that's nice and snug, that's gonna hold and I'll do that to the green and then to the red. Okay, you can see I connected, there's the, um, the green, the black, and I just pushed them into the box. That's what I suggest you do, because ultimately what's gonna happen is I'm gonna screw mount this cover. Uh, then we're gonna throw the power on and fire up the app and show you the rest. Got my breaker panel, and I'm just gonna turn, you can see this is off, these are all on. So I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, that means at least I wired it right. Okay, when I come inside, you can see the power button is there. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is get this hooked up to my Wi-Fi and then show you the app. You are in the Enphase app and you can see there's a few different fields here. Here's my solar production and consumption currently. So what you do is you go into the menu settings and then you go to profile 
and then under profile you'd say edit and then here you can see I have self-consumption turned on now that's really simple how you do it to show you exactly um, what the report would provide I'm just gonna go back uh, right here to this graph and so what you can see is again solar production in blue and orange is the consumption for everything else and then that red line graph that's actually the charging of the EV so the system in 2.4 kilowatt increments it looks at how much power is being consumed versus what's available and generated and that's the that that's what provides to your tesla so um that's kind of the only negative i would say is the increments it would be nicer if they were smaller but according to enphase they only have four steps and so it's 2.4 kilowatt increments so that's really straightforward how you use the app the last thing i want to show you is let's say that you want to override and start charging now you just hit that charge now button right there and that would override the self-consumption all right let's wrap up the review for the enphase nax charger for a product, I'm gonna give this a five. The thing is really well built, just like the J1772 charger that I previously reviewed. For installation, I'm gonna give it a four and a half. And the only reason there's a slight ding is that bottom screw to put in that bolt. A uh, little tricky, but now that you know, shouldn't be an issue. For functionality, I'm gonna give it a four and a half. It's great that it integrates in with the Enphase Solar and if you have Enphase batteries as well. Uh, the only negative there is that it only charges in those 2.4 kilowatt increments. I gave the feedback to the company and they said that unfortunately the hardware has only four possible steps built in. And so, you know, those were the steps they chose. And then for uh, the, the price, this is the 50 amp version. They make one for a 40 amp breaker, 50, 60, and 80 amp. Um, it's 688 for the 50 amp breaker version. Uh, it's a little higher than Tesla, but again, if you have the Enphase ecosystem, seriously consider it. So uh, that's a four and final score of 18. Again, trust head Tesla owner, Silicon Valley. Thanks for watching this review and look for more soon.